A new financial crisis has developed recently in America, and the trail of destruction it could leave behind will look nothing like what you might expect. In fact, I believe nearly 40% of the elite publicly traded companies, brands you've known and used your whole life, could go bankrupt because of a strange market event I call a flipping, wiping out thousands of investors' fortunes. I just finished writing a brand new report explaining exactly what the flipping is and how billionaires are already profiting from this big event and what you should be doing to prepare as well. To get a copy of my new free report with all the details, simply go to mccallfreereport.com. Again, that's mccallfreereport.com for a free copy of my new report. Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. It is August 4th, 2022, a beautiful Thursday down here in Florida. And we have a very, very, I mean, extremely special guest on today. One of the most famous, successful investors of our time, Mr. Jim Rogers, is joining us. You know, Jim, as many of you know, lives over in Singapore now, made his move over there uh, quite a bit ago. Uh, he was also uh, one of the founders of Quantum Fund, which is one of the, the big funds, and Soros Fund Management with George Soros. He also is the creator of the Rogers International Commodity Index. The guy has done so many things. He's traveled around the world. He's known so many people. He's on here today, and I got to tell you, he's a little more pessimistic than me. Uh, he's calling for what potentially could be one of the worst bear markets or the worst bear market of his lifetime. Not saying when, but he's going to talk about that. Also, he's going to give us his one investment that he'd buy right now for 10 years. The one and only. You'll be very interested to hear that. A lot of you will like to hear what he says. And think about this. He said he's investing in a country right now that used to be a USSR, part of USSR, and they broke it up. A country that I bet you 99% of you can't picture on a map, but he is investing in that. You want to know that country as well. All that and more coming up right now with the legendary Jim Rogers. I'm extremely pleased to have Jim Rogers sitting down with me today, especially what's going on in the world right now, especially what's going on in his part of the world. Jim, thank you for so much for joining Making Money for the first time. I'm delighted to be here, Matt. Let's figure out if we can make some money. We all need to. Okay, exactly, exactly. So speaking of making money, I got to jump right into it because obviously if we Google your name right now, you obviously know what comes up. Jim Rogers predicts the worst bear market in his lifetime. Can you expand a little bit on that? And are we already in the midst of that bear market? Well, I wouldn't bother Googling me. <laughs> I, I never Google me. Uh, well, no, Matt, in yeah. 2008, we had a problem. 2009, you remember, because of too much debt. Since then, Matt, the debt everywhere, even in China, has gone through the roof. How can the next bear market not be the worst in my lifetime? The debt is up by staggering amounts since the last one. So let me ask you this, you know, just to play counter argument here. A lot of people say, well, the U.S., for example, we could just keep printing money and print our way out of it. And I, I know that's not true. It creates inflation, which we're having now and many other issues. But how do you how do you counteract that argument that we could just print our way out of it because the dollar's not going anywhere? <laughs> OK, uh, that's that's wonderful. Uh, sounds great. We don't ever have to worry. Again. Uh, let's say they do that. Yeah. That's going to lead to a, an inflationary huge boom and a huge bubble. And then that collapse will be the worst in my life. All I said was the next bear market. Yeah. I didn't say which one, <laughs> whether it's an inflationary boom or a deflationary collapse. It's going to be the worst in my lifetime because the situation has gotten much, much worse. So, you know, I also, you know, reading up, you know, you, you mentioned- But I just want to ask you, Matt, yeah. Matt, whoever these guys are that say the next one won't be bad, please, let's have a show with them, okay? Yeah. yeah okay. it sounds crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And, and I've even said for years, even though I'm a bit of a perma bull on certain sectors in, in the market, that eventually you pay the piper. You just can't keep taking on debt and printing money. Eventually you have to pay the piper. And I think we're finally at that point right now uh, especially with a lot of things going on around the world. What about from a geopolitical standpoint, Jim? You know, you're over in, in, in Asia and, you know, right now we have Pelosi touching down in Taiwan, China threatening us. Do you see that escalating into something bigger, kind of you know, spreading throughout? Well, you know, those people in Washington is, don't have money brains and they're proving it yet again. Why would you do that to China? 
They have made it very clear they don't want it. Why do you poke them in the eye? Yes, I'm an American. Yes, I'm pro-American. But when my government makes foolish, foolish mistakes, I'm critical. One patriotic, patriotic American once said, it is extremely patriotic to criticize your government when they make mistakes. Yes. I cannot believe they're doing that. What do we gain by sending Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan? You know, it's funny you say that because I sat down my research team this morning and in Baltimore in office. I was there earlier and flew to Florida tonight. And I sat down and I turned around and looked at, at the guys. I said, am I losing my mind? Or is our government trying to make things fall apart? I mean, the decisions that they continue to make, and I'm a proud American as well. And I'm not trying to pick political parties here. But the decisions that they've been making recently, it's almost as if they're trying to sabotage everything that they're doing. They, they don't want to be reelected. I don't know what the hell's going on anymore. Uh, uh, well, as yeah. we, we all know that those people in Washington keep making mistake after mistake after mistake. And I just hope they don't get us all killed. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, if we do have that worst bear market of your lifetime, obviously you're going to see a lot of stocks potentially disappear, go down 80 or 90 percent. And if you have that, it usually brings down almost every sector within the market. We saw that in 2000, 2008, 2009 time frame. Where do you see any opportunities if you believe that is on the horizon? Well, you said we're not going to have a bear market because they're going to print a lot of money. So <laughs> then you should buy the things that go up. And if they print a lot of money, it's going to be commodities. It's going to be real assets. Whenever they print a lot of money, I mean, silver does not usually go down. It does not stay down when they print a lot of money. Agriculture has been a disaster for a long time. I find that commodities, real assets, attractive now. Not buying them today, but I will be buying them again soon, probably. That, okay, good. I, I mean, yeah. property, property you don't want to, well, you do because interest rates will eventually go very high, so you don't, don't want to own property. Stocks will form a big bubble. If you can play the bubble, you'll get rich. But if you miss, sure. you get, you'll go wiped out. Uh, you know, two kinds of people do well in bubbles. One, the people who are skeptical, they get wiped out right away. And the people who believe get wiped out yeah. right away. <laughs> or not right away, but eventually. Yeah. So bubbles can kill people. But if you're good at it, you'll make money. But bonds are certainly a bubble. Matt, what else do you see? Oh, I mean, I, you know, just to clarify, I wasn't saying I think the government should print their way out of it. I've had people argue me and tell me that's how they get out of it. So, um, you know, I, I again, I don't think we're, we're going to have a great bear market. And I'm not saying you're wrong or I'm right. I just don't see it right now. And I, but I agree with everything that you're saying will lead to it at some point. I just don't see it right now. So let me ask you this. You know, I, Matt, 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 I didn't say right now. I said the next. The next. Yeah. Okay. I, I forgot. Yeah, you, know, you, you can, what you can do is you watch make making money with Matt McCall and you'll find out when it's coming. I didn't say <laughs> when. I just said the next. The next. Okay. And maybe you're going to say we're not ever going to have a bear market again. <laughs> oh, my God. You and Janet Yellen. <laughs> so. Well, I guess one reason I, I tend to be a little more bullish is um, just innovation in general. And I kind of look at the, two th the 2020s right now, similar to the 80s, where you had a lot of great innovations converging, coming together. Do you see that as a potential of increasing productivity and eventually knocking down inflation because we can create goods and services at a much lower cost and kind of keeping this, this bear market if, or bull market, if you will, for years going? Do you think that we could prolong it for a little bit longer? Well, hallelujah. I'm delighted you should go down and meet Janet Yellen. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. We've already had the longest period in American history without a serious problem. It's 13 years. Maybe it'll be 33 years, Matt. Yeah. Hooray, hooray. I've, I've finally found another eternal bull. You and Janet should meet. <laughs> my only point is, Matt, Matt, my point is we've always had bear markets all over the world throughout history. We're going to have another one. And when the next one comes and you watch Matt to find out when it's coming, it's going to be the worst in my lifetime. It has to be. Okay. Do you, you say, no, it won't be because they'll print a lot of money. I'll say that'll make it even worse. That, no, no, I, I agree. It would make it worse. Um, I, so let me ask you this. Do you see any areas outside the United States that could be a better way, better place to invest regionally if this does happen or when it does happen, I should say? 
that you feel will not be as effective? Or is this something that would be contagious throughout the entire world? Well, since the U.S. is the largest economy in the world, everybody gets affected. It yeah. doesn't matter who you are. Well, well North Korea is not going to be a badly, effect, sure. not badly <laughs> affected. Uh, actually, Uzbekistan. I've been buying shares in Uzbekistan recently. Uh, I don't think Uzbekistan will be badly affected because it's been a disaster for decades. Yeah. So, you know, and they're just now waking up. But I don't know many. Maybe Venezuela will get it together. Uh, and be okay. I, I, I'm not investing in Venezuela, but yeah. it might. It's another absolute catastrophe. And frequently, if you can invest in a catastrophe, if you have staying power, you'll do well. And when I say they won't do so bad, you know, they've already been total collapse. Mm -hmm. So it won't get much worse in Venezuela or countries like that. So let me, let me ask you, what, how, where does Uzbekistan, how does that come onto your radar? And when you get when you get there, how do you even know where to invest? Obviously, you've been in the business a long time and one of the greatest investors ever. You know everybody in business. But what 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 crosses your desk, Jim? That says Uzbekistan. I better look into that. Well, that's a very extremely good question. I don't know how it clicked again. I've been to Uzbekistan a couple of times. It's a fabulous place to visit. Um, I guess I must have read something somewhere about changes taking place in Uzbekistan. They are opening up as an old communist country, a USSR company, a country is one of the Soviet uh, republics. Uh, I don't know what I read, okay. but uh, I've been there a couple of times, so I know what's there and I know it can be great. And it seems to me that they're now turning from catastrophe to, some, to less of a catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually a good place to invest. Yeah, I remember um, this, this was years ago when the whole Greeks, you know, they thought Greece was going to be the end of the world and the Euro zone was falling apart. I remember I, I used to work at Fox Business at the time and I, I had sat down with Wilbur Ross and I said, what the hell are you doing now? Because everybody's freaking out. You know, it's it's December 2008, whatever the hell it was. I can't remember what you, the days. Actually, it was past that. He goes, I'm buying Greek banks. I'm buying everything I can, buying up all of Greece and ended up being one of the great investments he made, you know, because nobody wanted to buy Greece. He's buying Greece banks, pennies on the dollar. And then, you know, a year later, nobody's talking about Greece. They get bailed out, and that's a great investment. So I'm going to have to get my research team on Uz Uzbekistan. I'm probably going to teach them where the hell it is first before they even start looking into it. <laughs> well, you should go there because it is a fantastic, phenomenal tourist uh, country. It's not, not exploited. Yeah. I mean, I buy airlines because of that, hotels because of that. In my view, it's going to be discovered as one of the great tourist countries of the world. And so you buy those things. That's great. I mean, but, I, but listen, Matt, wait, yeah. Matt, it, it ain't a lot to buy in Uzbekistan. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to sit around and say, hey, I got a list of 400 stocks there. Which ones do you want to buy? Yeah. <laughs> this is all brand new in Uzbekistan. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, you don't have to do too much research on it. Um, well, so are you, you seeing anything right now that you're buying that, that really kind of jumps out of you other than Uzbekistan outside of, uh, you know, commodities? There's anything that looks attractive to you right now, even if it's for the short term? Well, I'm not a very good trader. I'm the world's worst trader, right. in fact. So, so even if I told you something, I wouldn't, I wouldn't act. Uh, no, I, I mean, maybe if you're a good trader, it looks like, you know, there's a huge amount of pessimism around right now. And normally when there's a lot of pessimism, something comes along and causes a big, big rally. I mean, if we have peace in Ukraine, yep. the market will skyrocket and go through the roof. Something often happens when there's too much pessimism, there is too much pessimism now. So I would expect a big rally. But but Matt, I'm not a good trader. Yeah. A, and if there is peace, by the way, we will have a huge rally because grains will go down, oil will go down, the central banks will say everything is okay, they'll stop tightening on interest rates. Uh, and we will all say, wow. And so we'll have the blow off. Yeah. As you know, we often have blow-offs at the end of a long bull market. Uh, you remember in 1999, I think yep. it was, the NASDAQ doubled or tripled in six months or something in that blow-off. I mean, blow-offs are fantastic if you can deal with them. Yeah, you're right. If you deal with them and you can ride it out and get out quick enough because they, they tend to end blow up pretty damn fast and come back down. I mean, we saw in Japan decades ago. So you see it all over the place where, where it's happened like that. Um, so I got to ask you about gold. You mentioned, you know, physical assets and commodities is gold something that, that you believe 
is that some always a holding in your portfolio? Is that a long term portion? Is it an asset class you always have exposure to? I have some gold right oh, here. There you go. <laughs> I have a little, a little gold in my pocket. You should always have a little gold in your pocket. You never know. <laughs> Man, I first bought gold in 1971, I think it was. It wasn't even yet legal for Americans. Um, and I never sold any gold. I periodically buy it. Everybody should own gold. I'm, I'm an old peasant, and us old peasants, when the things go wrong, we want some gold under the bed. Yeah. We want some silver in the closet, you know. So I've got it, and I will continue to buy more and more and more, and I, it'll go to my children someday. But it, and if you're really good at it, if you're good at timing, which I'm not, oh, you can make a huge fortune yeah. if you get the bottoms of gold and silver before a big rally. Yeah, I, I am probably the world's worst trader. I've been doing this for 25 years and I've tried it and I've gave it up about 10 years ago. I buy good companies and hold them for long term or what I perceive are good companies and hold them. Trying to time the market is one of the craziest things I've, I've ever done in my life. Wait, wait, one one correction, man. I'm the world's worst trader. Oh, okay, so <laughs> cannot be. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a tie. Yeah, but hey, I'm certainly. Uh, if I if I kept doing it, Jim, I would catch up to you. So I, maybe I'll just stop and quit now. Let you get, let you take that with like that that crown <laughs> with you. Um, so all right, I always ask people before I let them go one question. And if you were going to go to an island, take the family there, uh, turn it off your phone, turn everything off for ten years. What's the one investment that you would buy right now that you feel so comfortable in that ten years from now? Uh, you, you'd put your money into it. Well, I guess I would have to say silver since okay. it's so depressed. That it's down 60 or 70 percent from its all time high. Maybe a farmer, but I couldn't I couldn't <laughs> go for 10 years and not not pay attention to yeah. it. But if you buy a farm uh, or well, I guess I'd have to say silver. I don't silver? know what okay. else I could say. Go away and not think about for ten years. So you mentioned farm, farm and land. Uzbekistan and Uzbekistan. Yeah, invest in Uzbekistan and silver. Right? <laughs> you mentioned farmland real quick before I let you go. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me recently, just with inflation, and I'm doing a lot more research in farmland and just how great of an investment asset it has been here in the United States over the last forty years. Do you do you think that's something that the average investor, if they can get exposure to farmland? have a portion of their portfolio in, in those type of alternative investments? Well, if you like being outdoors and getting dirty, buying a farm and becoming a farmer would be a spectacular uh, investment. I, I mean, I don't want to do it. I'm not yeah. going to do it. I, I'd probably fail as a farmer. But if you like it, Matt, buy a farm. Wow. You know, or marry a farmer. Marry. You know, find yourself <laughs> a nice nice farm woman and, and marry her. Uh no, no. Farming has been a disaster for a long time. Now, some countries, China is doing everything it can to help agriculture. Russia, of course, is trying to help agriculture. Uh, no, farming is going to be great all over the world for a long time. Yeah, there's going to be more and more mouths to feed, more and more middle class buying that food. I, I, you know, I'm like you. I, I, I'm not that much of, a, of an outdoor worker. I don't like getting too sweaty and dirty in the field. So it's definitely not my investment. I'd have to go on that website, was it farmers, farmers.com or something to find a girl because I, I definitely am not doing the hard work. <laughs> so, But Matt, I, I have to point out to you, the average age of farmers in America is 58. In Japan, it's 66. All over the world, the highest rate of suicide in the UK is in agriculture. I mean, more people in America study public relations than study farming. I mean, we're not going to have any farms soon. And one thing I've learned is you go into something where there's no competition, yeah. you might do well, even if you're hopeless. <laughs> well, I guess if this stock market thing doesn't work out, I got something to fall back on. Huh? I can always go look into farming, I guess, and, and learn that online. But, well, thank you so much. You know how to drive a tractor? I don't have a driver's license, Jim. I lived in New York City my life. I don't have a driver's license. So, so you can't, well, you ought to learn to drive a tractor. Exactly. I mean, there's no reason. I'll just jump right from a tractor, right? Skip the car and go right to a tractor. <laughs> All right, Jim. Thank you so much for joining us. I know it's later over there, or early over there, later over here, but thank you. It's been a pleasure. I've been reading your stuff for decades, and, and it's really nice for you uh, coming on the show. We really appreciate it. We wish you the best. And uh, I hope that worst bear market of your lifetime happens when you're like 98. If we could just push it back another <laughs> couple decades, would be great. 
Do I have time to tell you one quick of story course, about Buffalo? You said you're going to buy a, a, an island somewhere. There was a guy in 1938 in Paris who realized that it was all coming to an end. So he got out of his globe, found himself a small island. He just like you were looking for him, headed off to the South Pacific to wait out the disaster. The name of the island was Guadalcanal, which was the worst and longest battle of, the, of Asia during the Second World War. So you could be a genius yeah. and still go broke. <laughs> so, when I, so I don't know what I'm going to do with 10 years on my island. It's yeah. hard to find an island that will be safe. Yeah, that's true. I guess it's not as easy as go buy an island as you think. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Jim. It's such a pleasure having you on and uh, hopefully get you back maybe when this bear market comes and you get to say, I told you so, Matt. And we'll get you back on. But thank you so much for coming oh, on. Matt, it's, go it's going to last a long time. So we, I won't see you for a long time oh. if you wait for the end of the bear market. When it comes, I don't know when it's coming. Yeah. You know, watch making money. All right. Well, when it starts coming, I'm going to say, Jim told you it was there and we'll get you back on when it happens. All right. Cheers. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.